Hi everyone, welcome to DigiMax. I am K. Sorna Devi, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Madurai Sivakasi Nadas, Pioneer Meenashi Women's College, Puvandi. This is a learning resource for real analysis. Topics covered in this learning resource is countable set. In the previous video, we learnt about equivalent sets, countably infinite sets, and countable sets. Let us recall the definitions. Two sets are said to be equivalent if there is a bijection between the two sets. A set is said to be countably infinite if it is equivalent to the set of all natural numbers. And a set is said to be countable set if it is either finite or countably infinite. So recalling these definitions, let us see some of the theorems in countable sets. Theorem 1.1 A subset of a countable set is countable. So we have to take a countable set and we have to form a subset and we have to prove that the subset is a countable set. So if the given set A itself is finite, then automatically the subset is also finite. So the subset is countable. If the given set is infinite and the subset is finite, then automatically the subset is countable. So we have to consider the case if the given set and the subset are both infinite. So let us see the proof. Let A be a countable set, let B subset of A, we have to prove B is countable. So if A or B is finite, then we no need to prove that, no, there is no need for the proof, automatically B is countable. Hence, we are assuming A and B are both infinite sets. So since A is infinite and A is countable, we we have that A is countably infinite. So we can list the elements of A as A1, A2, etc., An. So let A N1 be the first element in A, which is an element of B also. That is, let A N1 be the first element in A, such that A N1 belongs to B. So we are collecting the subset B from a. So, I am taking the first element of A, which is an element of B as An1. Let An2 be the first element in A, which follows An1 such that An2 belongs to B. So, collecting like this, we can proceed to form the set B as An1, An2, etc. So here we are listing the elements of B as AN1, AN2, etc. So the elements of B can be labeled by using the elements of N. So B is countably infinite, infinite and hence B is countable. Now let us see theorem 1.2. Q plus is countable. What is Q plus? The set of all positive rational numbers. So we are going to prove that Q plus is countable. We very well know Q plus is not finite. It is infinite. So we have to prove that Q plus is countably infinite in order to prove that Q plus is countable. So I have to form a bijection from Q plus to N or else I can list the elements of Q plus as the first element, second element, etc. So, we are trying the second method. That is, we have to list the elements of Q plus as the first element is this one, second element is this one, like that. So, let us start the proof. Take all positive rational numbers whose numerator and denominator add up to 2. So, we are going to consider all the rational numbers in which if I add the numerator and denominator, the sum must be 2. What are all the rational numbers like this? I have only one rational number that is 1, which is 1 by 1. If I add the numerator and denominator, it will bring the sum as 2. 
So I am collecting the first element of q plus as 1 by 1 that is 1. Next I am taking all positive rational numbers whose numerator and denominator add up to 3. So what are all the rational numbers I am having? I have only two rational numbers. They are 1 by 2 and 2 by 1. So if I add the numerator and denominator of 1 by 2 and 2 by 1, I am getting the sum as 3. Then I am taking the rational numbers whose numerator and denominator add up to 4. How many rational numbers I am having? I have 3 rational numbers. 3 by 1, 2 by 2 and 1 by 3. So in this way we are collecting all the rational numbers whose numerator and denominator add up to 2, 3, 4 etc. So proceeding like this we can list all the positive rational numbers together from the beginning omitting those which are already listed. So which are all the rational numbers repeated we can collect only once. So I am getting the set as 1. 1 by 2, 2 by 1 that is 2, 1 by 3, 2 by 2 which is also 1, then 3 by 1, 1 by 4 etc. 2 by 4, that 2 by 4 is same as 1 by 2, it is already taken. So proceeding like this we are getting the set which is the set of all positive rational numbers in which this 1 is the first positive rational numbers. Then 1 by 2 is the second positive rational number like that. So here we are listing the positive rational numbers as the first element, second element etc. So this set contains every positive rational number each occurring exactly once. So we are omitting the repeated ones. So we are getting q plus is countably infinite and hence q plus is countable. Now let us see theorem 1.3 that is q is countable. In the previous theorem we proved that q plus is countable. In this theorem we are including 0 and also the negative rational numbers. So that q is countable. So definitely we can use the previous theorem to prove this theorem. First I am considering q plus. So q plus is set of all r1, r2, etc, rn, etc. Then what is my q? q is 0 plus or minus r1 plus or minus r2, etc. So to prove that q is countable, I have to prove q, there exists a bijection from q to n or else there exists a bijection from n to q. We all very well know that q is not finite. So I have to form the bijection from n to q. So how can I define the map f? This f is from n to q and it is defined by f of 1 equal to 0. So I am mapping the first natural number 1 to 0 in q and I am mapping all the even natural numbers that is f of 2n equal to rn. So all the even natural numbers will be mapped on to the positive rational numbers and all the odd natural numbers are mapped to the negative rational numbers. So f of 2n plus 1 equal to minus rn. So f is defined in this manner. We are going to prove that f is a bijection. So first of all we have to prove that f is onto. What do you mean by an onto function? If you take any element in the codomain there must be at least one pre-image in the domain. So here what is the codomain? Q. Q is the codomain. So for every element in Q, I have to find a pre-image in N. So is it possible in this map? Yes. So the codomain are having three type of numbers. One is 0, another one is positive rational numbers, another one is negative rational numbers. So 0 is... The 0 has the pre-image as 1 and the positive rational numbers has pre-image as even natural numbers and the negative rational numbers has pre-image as odd natural numbers. So all the elements in codomain are having at least one pre-image in the domain and hence f is on 2. Next I am going to prove that f is 1 1. 
what do you mean by one one different elements in the domain must have different images so i am taking two elements x and y in n so in n we have two types of numbers what are the numbers odd numbers and even numbers so i am considering two cases case 1 and case 2 so x and y are odd what happens then x is 2n1 plus 1 and y is 2n2 plus 1 so i have to take if the elements are different then the images must be different so i am taking x not equal to y then i have 2n1 plus 1 not equal to 2n2 plus 1 then 2n1 not equal to 2n2 which implies n1 not equal to n2 so from this step i can write minus or n1 not equal to minus or n2 which implies what is my minus or n1 that is f of 2n1 plus 1 and what is minus or n2 that is f of 2n2 plus 1 so i am having the result as f of x not equal to f of y so if i am taking two distinct elements in domain i have two distinct images in codomain so in this case one f is one one now i am now i am considering case two suppose x and y are both are even then x equal to 2n1 and y equal to 2n2 in this case also if i am taking x not equal to y then 2n1 not equal to 2n2 which implies n1 not equal to n2 which implies or n1 not equal to or n2 which implies f of 2n1 not equal to f of 2n2 that is f of x not equal to f of y and there is one more case what is that case if i am taking two numbers one number may be odd and one number may be even so if x is odd and y is even then x equal to 2n1 plus 1 and y equal to 2n2 so f of x equal to f of y implies if the images are same then i have to prove that the elements must be the same so if the images are same then i am having f of 2n1 plus 1 equal to f of 2n2 which implies minus r n1 equal to r n2 so a negative rational number is equal to a positive rational numbers what will happen when will it happen it will happen if both the rational numbers must be zero so r n1 equal to zero equal to r n2 which implies x equal to one so if r n1 equal to zero means what is the pre-image for zero that is one so x must be uh, equal to one and y must be also equal to one so x equal to y so in all the three cases we have proved that f is 1 1 and hence f is a bijection so we formed a bijection from n to q so we have proved that q is countably infinite and hence q is countable so next we are going to see the theorem n cross n is countable so we very well know n is countable here we are going to prove n cross n is countable so how will be the elements of n cross n yes they are in the ordered pair a comma b where a and b belongs to n so here to prove this theorem we are using the method in which we have proved q plus is countable in that theorem we have we add both numerator and denominator and the result must be 2 3 etc here also the same technique we are following we are adding the two coordinates that is if we add both the coordinates the result must be 2 3 etc so let us see the proof n cross n is the set of all ordered pair a comma b such that a b belongs to n so now i am taking the ordered pair a comma b such that if i add both the coordinates the result must be 2 that is a plus b equal to 2 what are all the ordered pairs such that a plus b equal to 2 yes i have only one ordered pair 1 comma 2 that brings the sum as 2 so next i am taking all the ordered pairs such that a plus b equal to 3 so what are all the ordered pairs i am having 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 so like this we are proceeding for a plus b equal to 4 i am having three ordered pairs 3 comma 1 2 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 so we are proceeding like this in collecting all the ordered pairs add up to 2 add up to 3 add up to 4 add up to 5 etc so here we are having the set 
वन कमा वन वन कमा टू टू कमा वन थ्री कमा वन टू कमा टू वन कमा थ्री एक्सेट्रा सो इन दिस सेट इफ देर इज सम एलिमेंट्स आर रिपीटिंग वी कैन डेलीट वी कैन डेलीट द रिपीटिंग एलिमेंट्स वी कैन टेक एक्सैक्टली वन सो दिस सेट कंटेन्स एक्सैक्टली एवरी ऑर्डर्ड पेर ऑफ एन क्रॉस एन एक्सैक्टली वन सो द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ एन क्रॉस एन आर लिस्टेड एज द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट सेकेंड एलिमेंट एक्सेट्रा सो एन क्रॉस एन इज काउंटेबल इन फाइनाइट and hence n cross n is countable in the previous theorem we used to collect the elements as 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1 etc that is we are arranging the elements of n cross n as a sequence and this sequence is represented in this diagram in this this diagram is known as cantor's diagonalization process so in this figure we are collecting the elements of n cross n diagonally now let us move to theorem 1.5 if a and b are countable sets then a cross b is also countable that is the cartesian product of two countable sets is countable so we have to take two countable sets we have to form the cartesian product a cross b and we have to prove that there is a bijection from n cross n to a cross b this is the method we are following to prove this theorem so first i am taking the countable sets a and b so since they are countable we can take that as countably infinite and i am arranging the elements of a as a1 a2 etc an etc and the elements of b as b1 b2 etc bn etc so we are defining a function f from n cross n to a cross b by f of i comma j equal to ai comma bj so what i am going to prove i have to prove that f is a bijection so first i am proving f is 1 1 so 1 1 means if the images are same then the elements must be same so i am taking two elements x and y belongs to n cross n since x and y belongs to n cross n they must be ordered pairs so x equal to b comma q and y equal to u comma v if i am taking f of x equal to f of y then i get ap comma bq equal to au comma bv which implies the first components are equal and the second components are equal so ap equal to au and bq equal to bv so what will happen the suffixes must be equal so p equal to u and q equal to v using this i can write the ordered pair p comma q is equal to u comma v so i am getting x equal to y so what is the result i am having f is 1 1 then i have to prove f is on to so for on to i have to take an element from the codomain and i have to find a pre image in domain so i am taking the element am comma bn in a cross b then automatically the suffixes m and n belongs to n so that m comma n belongs to n cross n and f of m comma n equal to am comma bn so what is the pre image for am comma bn it is m comma n so i am having f is on to and hence f is on by f is a bijection so what we have proved that n there is a bijection f from n cross n to a cross b so a cross b is countable next let us see theorem 1.6 so in this theorem first we are taking a countably infinite set a let a be a countably infinite set and f be a mapping of a on to a set b so this f is not a bijection it is given as only a on to mapping then we are going to prove that b is countable so what are all given in the statement first we discuss let a be a countably infinite set it is given in the statement let f from a to b be an on to map it is also given in the statement what we have to prove b is countable so i am taking an element b belongs to b so this b is the codomain for f so it is given that f is on to so automatically there is a pre image for this b so since f is on to there exists at least one pre image for b 
and I am choosing that pre-image pre as A which belongs to A. So choose one element A belongs to A such that F of A equal to B. Now using this A I am defining a function G from B to A by G of B equal to A. So my aim is to prove that this G is 1 1. So I am taking two elements B1 and B2 belongs to B. So G of B1 equal to G of B2 implies A1 equal to A2 which implies F of A1 equal to F of A2 which implies B1 equal to B2. So I am proving that G is 1 1 and G is a function from B to A. So what can I write? B is equivalent to a subset of the countable set A. So here I am not proving G is on 2. Instead of on 2, we are writing that B is equivalent to a subset of the countable set A. What is that subset of the countable set A? Yes, it is the range set of G. So if I am collecting all the images of the elements of B, then it is called the range set of G, which is a subset of A. So I am writing that as B is equivalent to a subset of a countable set A. So what we have studied in theorem 1.1, subset of a countable set is countable. So I am having range set is countable. Since the range set and B are equivalent sets, we can write B is countable. Now let us see theorem 1.7. Countable union of countable sets is countable. So I have to take a number of countable sets and I have to take the union and I have to prove that that union of countable sets is countable. So first for that I am collecting the set S. Yes. What are the elements of the set S? Yes. yes, they are the elements or the elements of S yes are countable sets that is a1, A2, etc., An, where each Ai is a countable set. Then I am considering case 1. So in this case 1, I am considering each Ai are countably infinite because each Ai is countable we have taken. So I am considering the case that each Ai is countably infinite. So if it is countably infinite, we can arrange the elements of Ai as follows. How A1, the elements of A1 can be arranged as A11, A12, etc. And the elements of A2 are arranged as A21, A22, etc. Like this, the elements of An are also arranged as An1, An2, etc. So we are going to define the map F from N cross N to union of An. And we have to prove that this F is a bijection. So how we can define F? F of i comma j equal to a i j, where a i j belongs to union a n. So then for every a i j belongs to union a n, the suffix i and j belongs to n. So we can find the pre-image i comma j belongs to n cross n such that a i j equal to f of i comma j. So we are getting the result as f is on to. So if it is on to, then I can use theorem 1.4. That is the pre theorem 1.4. What is this theorem states? N cross N is countable. So I can find N cross N is countably infinite. So in previous theorem what we have said, if F is on to, then B is countable. So by using that result, union AN is countably infinite and hence union AN is countable. So we have proved the result in this case 1, whereas each A is countably infinite. Now let us see case 2. If each A is countable, then for each I, we have to select a set B I such that B I is a countably infinite set and A I subset of B I. That is, we have to find a countably infinite set which is larger than or equal to the set A I. Then what will happen if you take union of all A I, then it must be a subset of union of all B I. So union B I is countable. We already proved in theorem, sorry, in case 1. So we can find union A I is also a countable. What is the result we are using here? We are using the subset of a countable set is countable. So we are having in both the cases union A I is countable.
थैंक यू